You're watching Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. The 2021 fall athletic season at West Virginia University is officially underway in the 26th season of WVU women's soccer as they get set to take on Buffalo here at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium. I'm Andrew, I'm Andrew Caridi, joined alongside by former ESPN soccer writer Adam Zundel. Well, it's been 110 days since this women's soccer program at West Virginia took the field. They're back at it again. We're back to normal with an extremely difficult challenge to open the season. Yeah, what you have here tonight are two teams that are a little bit disappointed with the way their seasons ended are going to come here with an edge. Buffalo didn't get a chance to play for its conference championship. West Virginia, the first round exit. So a lot of experience back on the field. So I think we're really going to see a good matchup tonight. Buffalo comes into this game with a chip on their shoulder after a great offensive performance in just eight games last year where they scored 17 goals. Marcy Barbaric had nine of those. She's the focus for them. Yeah, she had nine goals last year. She was the MAC Offensive Player of the Year. She has 22 goals to her credit. What does Coach Burke says? She's never satisfied. So she has continued to work, continued to work on her finishing. So she is going to be a tough challenge for West Virginia tonight. Well, as always, defense wins championships. And for West Virginia, they have an extremely experienced back line. Jordan Brewster is A1 on that back group. Yeah, absolutely. More accolades for her. She was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. She is somebody that just hates to lose. You watch her play. You can just see how competitive she is. So she is going to be the one leading that back line for the Mountaineers. Soccer is back in Morgantown as West Virginia takes on Buffalo here at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium. Starting lineups and opening kickoff when we come back from Morgantown on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. West Virginia is a place as unique as the beauty in its mountains and the strength of its rivers. The peaks and valleys are what make us mountaineers. And as West Virginians, we value hard work, teamwork, and trust. Those values are what make United Bank proud to be united with the mountaineers. Together, we'll climb to new heights. United Bank, West Virginia's bank. Sports medicine is not just for athletes. A lot of people injure themselves just in their regular daily life. The majority of my patients are people who play golf or tennis or hunt or fish. Basically regular people that want to get back to being active again and had some type of injury that prevents it. We want to treat people like family. We want to treat them like we'd want to be treated. We want to get them in, get them taken care of and get them on their way. We want to get them back to what they were doing before they got hurt so that they can be happy and healthy and active. West Virginia fans, stay up to date on all things Mountaineers at WVUSports.com. WVUSports.com has 24-7 access to all of your favorite Mountaineer teams. The site's modern design provides the same fan-friendly experience on a mobile phone as it does on a desktop computer. Watch videos, listen to podcasts, and read feature stories anytime, anyplace. WVUSports.com, the official home of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Another inside handoff, Letty Brown piles into the end zone, it's over, touchdown, Letty Brown. Now the quarterback, Howard's pursuit, they got him sacked, Dante Stills. Fires it down the field, and it is intercepted by West Virginia, Josh Chandler Samito. And the final seconds coming off of the clock here at the 62nd Liberty Bowl. Get your season tickets now at WVUGame.com. We conquer mountains, but that's not why they call us Mountaineers. It's because we don't let anything stand in our way. We build what's never been built, seek cures for the incurable, and go first into undiscovered frontiers. We are Mountaineers, and impossible is just another mountain to climb. We are back in Morgantown as West Virginia getting set to take on the Bulls of Buffalo in the 2021 home opener. Here's the starting lineup for Buffalo. Their starting goalkeeper, Emily Kelly, has played every single game in her career so far. She's a senior. There's the lineup for them, all 11. Lazenby, Wengender, Yurchek, Barbaric, Camper, Callahan, Rukin, and company. And there's head coach for this Buffalo team, Sean Burke, in his eighth season, six straight MAC tournament appearances and uh, in his opinion, kind of robbed of an opportunity to compete for the MAC title last year, along with that potential berth into the NCAA tournament. There's the starting lineup for West Virginia. 
Maddie Murphy or Kaza Massey was the question. The answer is Massey. And there's the rest of the 11. And uh, Adam, bit of a different mesh for this West Virginia team that we didn't certainly expect. Head coach Nikki Izzo Brown in her 26th season, ready to get the ball rolling once again. And when we were talking to her this week, certainly excited to do it. Brain's a little bit scrambled, but it always is like that for her. <laughs> Absolutely. Lots of energy. It's so interesting to hear her talk. And uh, her, her energy is infectious, ready to get started with this season. Uh, you know, the short off season, everybody was anxious to play. Uh, Coach Burke was the same way, kind of enjoyed the, the short off season. Um, everything was so different last year in terms of your training and, and uh, you know, playing and then taking the time off and kind of rebuilding uh, just was a different experience for everybody. But I know, I think grateful is, is, is a word people have used a lot, and I think in sports over the last 18 months. But I do still think there's a level of gratitude to be able to come out and play. And I know everybody's happy to be playing in August. And instead of this time last year, are we going to play? Are we not going to play? Um, and, and so to have a season, you know, you've got to return to that level of gratitude. And I think that was definitely expressed, uh, you know, during the week when we were talking to the coaches. Buffalo in the electric blue uniforms. Meanwhile, the host West Virginia in gold. Let's talk about what a different season that every single team had in the NCAA in the past year. Buffalo going 6-1-1 one, and one in their season. Meanwhile, West Virginia played 14 games. They were 10-3-1. Both of these teams, though, picked to win their conference. West Virginia, the Big 12, for the eighth time in the ninth year, the last nine years, rather, and Buffalo picked to win the MAC. Yeah, tons of experience coming back uh, for both teams. We kind of talked about it a little bit in the open. and. And just to expand a little bit on, on the Buffalo situation last year, West Virginia fans of the men's program can maybe be a little bit sympathetic. Um, Buffalo 6-1-1 one, one, did not get a chance to advance to play, uh, to, to, did not get a chance to play for the conference title uh, due to winning percentage. Bowling Green was 5-1-0. and oh. That extra game, that draw hurt Buffalo. Uh, I know they were disappointed about the way that ended. We talked about them coming with an edge and a chip on the shoulder. And, you know, that short offseason kind of plays into that a, a little bit. Um, but at some point, that's over. Uh, you know, you carry it, you try to motivate it, but at some point you got to deal with now. And I think the Buffalo talking to them, I think they, they realize that. But if they can use that edge and, uh, you know, to their advantage here tonight, um, they're going to definitely do that. Lynch for West Virginia able to flip the field. Isabella Sibley, senior. Back heel from McCarthy. Sibley. Send it square, and that's easily cleared away by this Buffalo team, the back line for them. Just as experienced as West Virginia, you can certainly make the argument. 22 of the 24 players last year, and that's an extremely successful, albeit cut short season, returning. And 10 of their 11 starters, with the exception of the freshman defender, Aliyah Rukin from Toronto. And speaking of newcomers for West Virginia, if you had Annika Leslie earning the start for the Mountaineers, you knew something we didn't. Here's a chance. McCarthy past the keeper, and it's moved away. Kelly off her line, able to get something on it, and Buffalo able to clear. McCutcheon, the Oklahoma transfer in the gold for West Virginia this season. Going back, that was a really good ball from Heredia Beltran through to McCarthy. I know coaches, Coach Izzo Brown is, is excited about the play of McCarthy back to full strength. She had some stops and starts last spring um, and also in the fall as well. So um, seeing her at full strength in the exhibition, she, she netted a pair of goals against Maryland. So her performance has uh, got Coach Izzo Brown excited. So uh, seeing Heredia Beltran contribute also, a couple of uh, younger, newer faces contributing right away here for West Virginia. And there's Leslie heading it down for Brewster. And she'll escape away from your check. And knock it forward for Sibley. So the front line for West Virginia, Sibley, Valorand, and Laurie Heredia Beltran. Different look, Alina Stahl unavailable for this game. And we'll see a second look on that early opportunity for Lily McCarthy. I saw that ball come through perfectly played, just not able to, to touch it to that left foot and, and get it to, to put it on goal. In McCarthy's case, it's one thing to start as a freshman for West Virginia, did so last year. A lot of excitement when you do that, but I think Coach Izzo Brown was just as excited this year going into her sophomore campaign. That really says something. Leslie back to Massey. 
Nearly five minutes gone here in Morgantown. It was interesting talking to Coach Burke about how to approach this game. He obviously has high expectations for this team uh, to, to potentially make a run um, in the NCAA tournament and use this game as a measuring stick. And, and sometimes when you see teams coming in West Virginia, play West Virginia, they're going to defend. They're going to just sit and defend for 90 minutes. Um, and I think what he was indicating is he'd like to try and play, uh, but you got to pick your spots. When are we going to possess? Can we possess? That'll be the challenge. I don't think he has the desire to come in here and, and defend for 90 minutes. He, he indicated they did that a couple years ago, and, and that did not benefit his team in the long run, what was his sentiment to us. And uh, so, again, you're going to have to pick your spots. You don't want to run free, uh, free and loose f for 90 minutes. Uh, but at the same time, if you come in here and you defend for 90 minutes, have you really tested your team? Have you really gotten what you need to out of this game for a team that has a lot of expectations? West Virginia looking to break here. Lynch, put it down. No problem there for Buffalo's Emily Lazenby, the Memphis transfer. mentioned the last time these two teams played. West Virginia earning the victory. All-time series is 2-0 for West Virginia. This is Leslie, partially dispossessed. Barbaric, she's dangerous at the edge of the 18, and that'll roll to Massey. So potentially some jitters there for Annika Leslie, but when you have a player like Marcy Barbaric on your back, Trying to make something happen here. What's your impression of Buffalo early on, Adam? Yeah, they, they were coming out in their uh, the, in a unique 3-2-4-1, uh, and they're going to stick with that until uh, until the the game dictates that they can no longer do that. Um, but they're not going to play scared. I, I see again. I think see a really smart team that, as coach indicated, they're going to pick their spots. And you know what he said about Barbaric is that she's she's not afraid of the moment. She's not scared of the moment. And I think that you can say that very early here in the early going. Buffalo's not, a, not scared of this moment. That was the focus that Coach Burke wanted to see from his group. You know, he said in the past they might have had that awe factor when facing off against a team like West Virginia and the tradition and success that they bring. Most recently in 2016, West Virginia won that first or last meeting 2 nothing, And with a veteran presence like Buffalo has this year, he thinks that they're equipped and they have the experience to give West Virginia a game. Absolutely. Come in here and compete. He wants to see if his team will still compete despite how the game transpires. Maybe the West Virginia, if they score early, they're not the worst thing in the world. It's so early on in the season, Adam, and compared to last year, you don't necessarily want to give away games, but there are so many silver linings that just weren't there last year. Yeah, you, you expect, and again, we hope that uh, this, is a, this is a long season with a lot of games, but you expect to have some room for error, um, that you can use this game and come and play. And, and if you get a result, that's great. But if you learn, you can, if you get some experience that will help you win some games later on in the season, you'll take that. You'll maybe make that trade. Valorin is going to leave it forward here for Sibley. And that's chased down in the end by Tess Ford, the senior, getting to it for Buffalo. And Sibley back after it. And it's going to be a corner for West Virginia after the tough collision near that flag. So first threatening corner kick opportunity for West Virginia. I mentioned so much experience for both of these teams. How about this? 140 plus games of experience for Buffalo on the back end. Meanwhile, for West Virginia, 161. That is 301 games played. So with all of that experience, what do you expect to see? Well, you expect to not see a lot of mistakes being made. You expect to see the defenders to communicate well and to play very clean. Um, and and you, so it's going to take an exceptional effort to break down these teams and get a goal. Lynch to take. Cleared away by Buffalo. Here's Angst. Trying to let one go. This will be booted down the field only as far as Brewster. Intent to clear that time, Lazenby. And 
We did have Gabby Robinson factoring into that graphic regarding experience in games played. Now she's unavailable for West Virginia in this game, and that's Annika Leslie in the back end playing with Jordan Brewster. No pressure. Yeah, we'll see uh, Buffalo probably try to go at Leslie a little bit tonight and, and, and test her. I mean, that wouldn't be much of a much of a secret, I think, for anybody. Leslie, the freshman from Halifax, Nova Scotia, member of the U-17 Canadian national team and was a captain during the 2019 Mexico tour for that group. And here she is again. Slides it into the middle for Lynch. Some fancy footwork allowing Buffalo to escape. Lifted over the defense. This is Barbaric. Barbaric. Brewster closing in. Barbaric and on Massey going to send it across the six yard box. And nothing dangerous there. No problem for Massey. You would have expected more there from Barbaric. On a great ball over the top and a break from Buffalo. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wonder if Leslie got sucked up a little bit too high on that. And Barbaric, we talked about her being able to finish and improving her finishing. Wants a much better effort on that. You, again, we talk about not making a lot of mistakes, not seeing a lot of mistakes. That's a beautiful golden opportunity there for Buffalo that you would want to take better advantage of. Put something on frame. Uh, almost, uh, almost in no man's land as if she was expecting another runner, but she should have had the vision to see if someone was going to be able to make that. Uh, just n and not enough if it was going to try and test Massey. Valorin with space to her right. And Rukin able to intercept. So Buffalo seemingly comfortable in possession for maybe one of the first times in this game. Coach Burke saying that we have to make West Virginia work when we have the ball. We can't just panic when we have it. We have to build up. We have to get something going and make them work. Well, and interesting on the flip side of that, Coach Izzo Brown said, uh, close down space early, right? So it's two sides of the same coin. Who can do a better job of, of, of what they want to do there? Valoran, McCarthy in the box. Sibley lifted in, touched away. Heredia Beltran's shot is rolling low, and Emily Kelly will snatch that up. That's a great press play from the transfer from Oklahoma, McCutcheon for West Virginia to create that opportunity. Yeah, and I also like that touch there from McCarthy to lay it out wide. Almost leads to a rebound opportunity. Not everything is scripted, you know, with a perfect cross. That ball kind of bounces around, leading to a, a, a half chance there for West Virginia. And Emily Kelly will lift that back into the midfield position. Kelly, first team all Mac, the goalkeeper for Buffalo in this game. Barbaric playing off the shoulder of Oxt. Barbaric into the middle. The positioning there from McCarthy. And it's Sibley for West Virginia. So nearly 15 minutes gone. Here in the season opener, also the home opener for West Virginia. Two shots on goal, one corner kick, and nothing statistically recorded so far for Buffalo. So Adam, all things considered, we went into the season, and you say, all right, only player West Virginia lost was Stephanie Ferrer Van Ginkle. Yeah, she led your team, or co-led your team with six goals. Lena Stahl also had six, but nothing really is, isn't gonna change right now. But the lineup that we're seeing right now, drastically different. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, when you're at West Virginia, though, and we've said this year after year, there's a there's a level of expectation and a standard. And if you're going to crack the lineup, you obviously have a, a level of talent. Now, the experience is, is kind of the part there that you're going to miss, um, and the growth that Stephanie Ferrer Van Ginkle had throughout her career was really remarkable, but it started somewhere. And so you're starting to see the start for some of these other players here. Um, uh, to hear tonight. Your Jack whistled on that foul against Brewster, allowing West Virginia to reset the play. Bit of a hold on the arm as the replay you just saw. Uh, Brewster with a, a really bad giveaway there. Intended that pass for Nicole Payne on the far side of the field. 14 minutes gone. I mentioned Buffalo's success last season despite no postseason berth. West Virginia's strongest season opening opponent since 2018 in terms of winning percentage. When they opened against number four Penn State who won 18 games that year. And oh yeah, they'll play Virginia again. <laughs> again. Coming up on Sunday. 
Yeah, we got a long way to go until then. You know, trust. Ask any coach. You get. You know, you got a long way to go because this is a this is a handful here tonight. This is an absolute challenge. Um, and, and we're seeing that. But uh, you know, Coach Izzo Brown always goes and plays people. You know, where, wherever she wants to test her team, particularly that at non-conference. Um, in this area, you're going to get a good test. You know, you consistently play Penn State. Um, Penn State usually has a, has a team come there too. Um, they played Stanford a couple of years uh, to, in that opening weekend. Uh, Virginia, obviously, it, it, almost an annual matchup, and now it's almost uh, <laughs> three times in, in, in five or six months. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what these games are for. When you can have that full season, we talked about the margin of error, you want to see where you are, see how you stack up, test yourself up against not just, you know, top 25, but different styles too because – what did West Virginia run into in Rice in that NCA opener? They ran into a team that was content to defend uh, for as long as they possibly could. Uh, got one shot in that game, Rice did. It was a goal, and that was the difference in the game. So you want to see different styles uh, that you that will prepare you for that ultimate uh, that ultimate test, which is the NCA tournament. Handball in your check inside the box and. That's why Massey will play short here for Brewster. That was funny when we were talking to Coach Izzo Brown, too. We asked for so many questions about Buffalo, so many questions about the beginning of the season. And we said, oh, yeah, we also got to talk about Virginia. And she just rolled her eyes and said, you guys know more than I do at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she wanted to continue to talk about Wegmans and <laughs> Buffalo Wings, that, uh, that uh, New York connection. <clears throat> Buffalo Bills. She said, I like them a little bit better because I bet they're Buffalo Bills fans, <laughs> as she is. Yeah, I think that was uh, an association with asking about the hunger of this Buffalo team with <coughs> not being afforded the opportunity to play for anything besides their scheduled 10 games. They only played eight. Ready a Beltran, showing great speed down the wing. Callahan. One of two Callahans on this Buffalo team. That was Hannah Callahan, the senior, and her twin sister, Abby Callahan. Hannah playing that defensive midfield position, along with Peyton Robertson, 18 in blue. Ballerin. Looking for that chip pass over the top to McCarthy. And easy for Kelly to handle. Uh, uh, Hannah Callahan, also one of those players that earned postseason honor. She was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. So don't want to lose her in this shuffle here and, and her importance to what Buffalo does and her role on the pitch here tonight. You got to do something special to win a Defensive Player of the Year award as a holding midfielder. Yeah, I mean, listen, the coaches usually vote for those things and they know, right? Sometimes they don't know their name. They'll say, oh man, 20 was tough to, yeah. 20 was tough to game plan. She, she seemed to win everything. And so uh, you trust the coaches to make those decisions. And if she jumps out like that, you're right. Um, then she's definitely doing something right. But coaches know. I mean, they'll watch the film, uh, they'll prepare, and they know that uh, that's a player they're going to have to to work around and deal with. And so Buffalo sticking to its guns. They are playing that 3-2-4-1, three, three center backs, so three primary defenders and those two holding mids. There's Coach Burke. He said that he might experiment a little bit with the 4-3-3 three, three position, but as of now, they're playing how they're comfortable. Yeah, and it was interesting because of their experience, you know, he liked that they can problem solve on the fly. They can change game plans. They can change shape if, if they need to um, on the fly. And they do it kind of um, on their own. Obviously, they wouldn't change formations without, without directive from the coach. But they can problem solve and do a lot of things on the field without necessarily his, his orchestrating every single movement. McCutcheon able to win another ball for West Virginia. Lynch, here's McCutcheon again. Played 35 games with Oklahoma. Part of that new look midfield for West Virginia. McCarthy, McCutcheon, and Lynch. I guess not entirely new look, but you know, Stephanie Ferrer Van Ginkel, it's a little bit different. Yeah, and that's the interesting part about every single year. Unless you have all 11 players playing the same spot, uh, you know, you have to get used to the way different players play and where they want the ball, where they're going to be in, in that anticipation. And so, um, you know, that's a, that's a chemistry thing that develops in real time as games go on. You can go, uh, you know, uh, gold on gold, right, and, and, and play in, in a scrimmage and do those things. But until you're 
until the lights are turned on and it's game time, that's when these things start to develop. Um, and so again, we're watching this, and I, 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 so far I think the touches have been good out of those uh, uh, midfield players. McCarthy's had some really good touches, and I like what she's done. So uh, it's a, off to a good start for that combination. Payne, McCarthy, and Another Sibley. Three in the box for West Virginia. Sibley's just gonna fizz this one across and hmm, cleared away hey, by Wengender. Did that go out? Nope, it would be a deep throw. I couldn't quite see. We'll see that opportunity again as West Virginia. Good job getting the break on. Had some options to choose, but again, that's good defensive structure by Buffalo. Nothing easy to take from there. Yeah, I think she got a little over top of that. I think she wanted to send that a little bit more forward. It, sent, it went back to the top of the 18. And there was nobody there. She had a couple of runners, uh, you know, going to goal there. Um, so need a little bit better quality out of that touch there to send something in a little bit more dangerous. Just over 24 minutes left to play in half number one. No score yet between Buffalo and West Virginia. The season opener for this Mountaineer women's soccer team in year 26 and the official beginning of the 2021 fall athletic season. We are, fingers crossed, back to normal. Yeah, exactly. Things <laughs> have changed just like they did last year on, on an hourly basis. I know, I know a lot of uh, people in athletics are worried about the Delta variant as they as they should be um, and vaccination rates um, trying to get those higher should be mentioned Buffalo said that they're at a hundred percent vaccination rate so yeah good for that squad so take a look at that one again but uh, it's interesting because we do hear the band kind of playing it yeah. in the background here in the, in the parking lot, getting getting ready for, for their game days uh, coming up soon. So it does have that feel, and it doesn't feel like August right now. There's going to be, there's a shot of the band there. Um, it doesn't feel like August because it's overcast. It's not 90. Usually we're here and it's 90 degrees and it's sweltering. So it feels a little bit more like fall. I have a feeling we're not done with August yet <laughs> and that kind of feeling uh, here. But today we'll take it for sure. It's beautiful conditions for a, for a match. Heredia Beltran is going to test Kelly right there, showing her skill and why she's starting. Floats into the midriff of Emily Kelly. But how about that from Heredia Beltran? Yeah, good touch there, creating her own space. Nice cut back there, getting that shot off. Test the keeper, that's the third shot for West Virginia here. Buffalo not without, uh, without an official shot here, but that's uh, not indicative of, they, of the chances that they had. They did have the one really good opportunity, and I think that's been about it for them here in terms of creating offensive chances. Um, and, but West Virginia has three shots, and I think they've had Probably three and a half quality chances if you're unofficially scoring that at home. And it does seem like West Virginia is making it more of their game slowly as we move on through here. But yeah, the best opportunity of the game does belong to Buffalo and it did belong to its best player. Marcy Barbaric, grad student from Grand Island, New York, was in on goal, decided to pass instead of shoot. Nobody home. Got to have that short memory, though. Put that one behind you. If you continue to continue to lament it, it can affect you going forward. Sibley. Nice combo there with McCarthy. Anna Callahan makes the read. Intercepted by Sibley. Isabella Sibley in the box. And she is tackled, and the ball knocked away, stepping up to her, Tess Ford, the senior center back. And once again, McCarthy was kind of in the mix of that play, getting things started. See some contact, West Virginia player down. Buffalo's on the move now. Onks will let that roll for Keza Massey. Wengender after it for Buffalo. We saw your check. Bit of a screen there. A little bit of contact there. The ball is starting to move away. Yep. Looked worse in real time. It did. It did. I would agree with that. 
That's one of those, if, if, if you whistle it, both, both sides are unhappy. <laughs> and if you don't whistle it, both sides are unhappy. <laughs> Look at that footwork from McCarthy. Lifted over, Heredia Beltran has the opportunity, slides it across, Valorand, and it's a tap-in for West Virginia. <laughs> Nearly at the 25-minute mark, a great switch, a great slide across, and the goal for the Mountaineers. Yeah, I believe that started with McCarthy, and a nice touch, really good composure in the box. There you go. McCarthy sent in. She's been in the middle. She's been really, really good, even though that ball went off the head. There, the defender. Good touch. Great vision. Great composure in the box to slide that one across, and Valorant is automatic for the goal. Oh, right between the defender's legs. How about that? How about that? So West Virginia with 20 minutes to go in half number one find themselves up 1-0. And that is created by Lily McCarthy. Final touch applied by Julianne Valoran, but all the credit as well to Delari Heredia Beltran, who clears it back to Annika Leslie. Yeah, you're, I mean, you, exactly. It took three really good plays, right? I mean, it starts out of there, the vision, the presence of mind to pop that thing forward. I, I know it caught the, the head of the Buffalo player, but it's still made its way over top. Good composure by Heredia Beltran in the box to slide that through and then between the defen uh, defender's legs. And again, Valerian just automatic from that, uh, in that situation as a finisher. Well done. Well done from West Virginia. Really clean play. Bit of a no man's land situation for the defender, Tess Ford, who had to make a play on the ball on the over the top by Lily McCarthy, but Ended up rolling perfectly to the West Virginia freshman. Laurie Heredia Beltran gets on the score sheet in her debut with the assist. Member of the U-20 U.S. Women's National Team, the number 18 overall recruit in the IMG Top 150, a four-star prospect, has been with the program since January 21st. And they're really excited about her. She makes her impact known in not a lot of time at all. Buffalo, though, looks to answer. And Brewster able to get the block on them. That's Zampano, the freshman, and I know that Buffalo really likes her. She was really impressive in exhibition. Coach said she played maybe not quite like an upperclassman, but like a, like a sophomore or junior, and you saw that really smooth on the ball. And again, not afraid, not afraid of that, that moment. Played plays with confidence, and you see her, you know, she comes in, gets a touch start something right away. So we'll keep an eye on on seven for Buffalo. It's upon him. Valorant, the goal scorer for West Virginia. With her ninth career goal for the Mountaineers. Ready a Beltran taking down the whistle. Clean tackle. As Kaya Schultz in the physical play. Lynch will leave it to Ost. Ready a Beltran once more. Valoran short. Sagala coming in back post, and that's over the top of first. So West Virginia making a couple of changes along with Buffalo. Warren Sagala, one of the captains of this West Virginia team. It's Brewster, Sagala, and Gray Smith. McCarthy, Valoran. Ready a Beltran. McCarthy. Sagala. Follow it to the end line. And it's a corner for West Virginia. So Ready a Beltran. Want to get something? A little bit of a miss there from McCarthy, but it ends up with Sagala chasing it down and, and, and leading to that corner opportunity here for the Mountaineers, second of the evening.
Lynch to take. Ready a Beltran. Lifts it in. Valron. And it'll roll to Kelly. How about Julian Valoran? Her career at West Virginia, I asked uh, Coach Abraham, she's gonna try to play every single position here as you take another look at this corner. On the recycle, Valorant got a header, uh, not able to get enough on it, but she is just so versatile. Uh, come, came in, played defender, moved up top, scored a bunch of goals. Then in the middle of the season, uh, you know, last year, defender goes down, she goes about out and plays uh, you know, at, on the back line. But uh, she's so dynamic that it seems like obviously getting the goal here tonight that uh, you want her nice and dangerous up top and getting the, getting the ball as much as possible. Yeah, when coaches of Brown said, we're putting Valorant at center forward for this game. Let's check another one of those positions off the box. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, you can put her in, you can, you can literally put her anywhere. Is that a challenge? <laughs> I mean, I think so. <laughs> and during her career, she's right. almost done it. All right. Uh, you say the same thing about uh, what's interesting about uh, Barbara. She came in and, and played on the back line because that's where the team needed her. And then she's developed and, and, and is an all-conference player of the year, conference uh, uh, player. This is Onks, the fullback, slides it across, Sigala! 2-0 West Virginia. And another tap in for the Mountaineers. How about the outside back, Mackenzie Onks, running all the way to the end line. And the captain, Sigala, makes it two. Yeah, good job by Onks, staying with it. Good feed there. Excellent job by Sigala to beat the defender to the ball and knock it home between two defenders there for the score. And here's a great look at Onks on that end line. 2-0 West Virginia Sagala with her first. And again, credit as you mentioned, Onks doing that work all the way from the left back spot to double West Virginia's lead. Goal comes in the 31st minute. And West Virginia, historically, they get two goals, and they almost never lose. 51 of their last 52 when scoring twice have resulted in a victory. So to get these two strikes early in the first half, good indication. Maya Ladani will touch it forward for McCarthy. Abby Rodriguez will play the primary forward position. She's pressing the ball right now, lifted back for Nicole Payne. And Sagala. West Virginia obviously wants to keep its foot on the gas here. Buffalo needs to regroup. Utilize that experience in terms of translating to some composure in this situation down two to nothing. Still 13 minutes left to play in this first half. Have to regroup, have to get more of the ball. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, as you take a look at uh, Emily Kelly for Buffalo, really not much she could do on either of those opportunities to make a save. As a really, you know, when it comes down to it, right now it's better offensive play for West Virginia. Um, you know, those were really clean goals, well executed. It wasn't some terrible mistake by any particular player is just outstanding offensive play. Another corner coming up for West Virginia here off of the head of Lazenby. So West Virginia adding its second goal from Lauren Sagala created by Mackenzie Onks, 11th career goal for the redshirt senior Lauren Sagala of Salisbury, Connecticut. All Big 12 second team member. Did not start in this game, but came on with fresh legs. Started all 14 games last season. Lynch on corner duty yet again. 
Lifted high, Kelly after it. She's knocked down by Sagala. It'll be Buffalo's possession. Final 10 minutes here for Buffalo. Really important to try and find their way into this match so that they can get to the break and regroup and try and figure out a, a way to either get on the board or if they can find one here in the last 10 minutes, build, build and continue that momentum. But right now it's, it's very much uphill for the Bulls. And it seems like the more time goes on, West Virginia finds its footing even more. First goal came in the 25th minute by Valorant for West Virginia. And then the 31st from Sigala. So just six minutes between strikes. And they've really changed the unit. Out here. They've got some new players given an opportunity. That is a little bit of the, the nature of college soccer that's different. Maybe if you spent your summer watching uh, <laughs> uh, some of the European uh, championship. But uh, you, know, you have those substitutions you can make, you, then you can re-enter. Um, in the, in the second half. So you're gonna see a little bit uh, more changes. Uh, that's why depth is a key in, in the college game. So because there are so many changes that you can make and you can make some some adjustments with your personnel and, and match up a little bit uh, to a certain degree, obviously. Uh, but that is something that is unique to the college game. So West Virginia's front three right now. Leah Sparacio, Abby Rodriguez, and Lauren Sagala. showing that track speed on the first step. Chloe Adler gave it away there. Hard in after it, Ladani and Sparacio. Buffalo has to do a better job holding the ball in the middle of the field there. Looks fine from Sparacio, Sagala with a misstep. Holding back. Really hemmed in by this West Virginia pressure. Leslie? Back to Massey. West Virginia scored four goals in last season's home opener against Kansas State. Enzi Broussard had two. Copain with one and Valorant also with one. West Virginia able to really sit and pick where they want to get that ball. Then Buffalo steps up. Ultimately, West Virginia gets the ball back. So it's keeping an eye on when Buffalo decides to press that ball. Not, not pressing a real high line right now, but in West Virginia pick there. Conceding some space here as you see West Virginia. Finding its spots. Lynch has dropped back to the outside back position and they've put Mackenzie Angst in a bit of a left midfielder role. She's after it now. Buffalo though possesses. Pizzani. Back away to Angst. Rodriguez. Close feet in tight. Sparacio. Rodriguez. Adani. Trying to let it fly. Back to Lynch. And even Buffalo reluctant in, in those spots on the field to, to really press there. Robert Trinson tried to lift that over for Bizzani. Control the ball by Catherine Camper, but offside is Caitlin Walsh down that right wing. 
Just needed to hold on a little bit because there was going to be some space. A little, little anxious there. We've seen that so many times there in the history of West Virginia's opponents of just looking for that one big pass to try and free something up. We just saw there. And they run into the machine. It is West Virginia when operating at maximum efficiency. I think you talk to the West Virginia coaching staff and they definitely don't see it that way, but when you're in control of a game like you are right now, you have the freedom to create a little bit. Get some things going out of your tool bag and get a drastically different look like you have right now. And Donnie almost loses the shoe and the sock. <laughs> I mean, the shoe, common. The sock, yeah, all the way. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> that makes it pretty easy to spot, doesn't it? Yeah. That doesn't happen by accident, does it? In the meantime, Jordan Brewster and Mackenzie Yonkst will head down to the sideline for some refreshment. Maya Ladani and the equipment back on. There's a West Virginia bench. Lisa Stoya down there. And Ladani's back into it. So West Virginia striking first from Julianne Valorin. It's 2-0 right now, but this made it 1-0. Playing in that center forward role. She had some opportunities, found herself in the game, gets rewarded. Yeah, we talked about how versatile she is, how active she is. She's all over the field. She makes things happen. She's so dynamic. And when you do that, good things are going to happen. You put yourself in a good spot, just like she did here, scoring that first goal on that beautiful ball and finishing. Already a Beltran earning the assist. Go coming in the 26 minute for West Virginia. We had another tally six minutes later with Lauren Sagala's goal. So closing in on halftime at this ridiculous soccer stadium. You know, Andrew, you talked about the creativity and being able to play a little bit open. I think West Virginia has that luxury to go play, right? Just try to make something happen. Um, you might have some, some game plans and, and some things that you want to do, but, but go play. Go break somebody down, find the open space, and just go play. Rodriguez. Hampered there by Ford. It's the nutmeg. And keeps possession. Coach Izzo Brown told us specifically, you guys are going to enjoy what Abby Rodriguez is able to bring to the table. see West Virginia, energy comes to mind, you know, obviously from Rodriguez, but I could go down the line and I don't feel like, <laughs> who's not playing with energy? You know, it's really evident in her, but I feel like West Virginia is is playing hard. And I know that that's, that's you know, when you hear Coach Ezra Brown talk about some of the, the hallmarks and the foundation of West Virginia teams, it's go play hard. Obviously there's talent, uh, obviously, <laughs> a program that's won as many games, NCAA tournament, has that legacy. But at the end of the day, it's go and outwork your opponent. And one of the team's motto is, is working hard over talent. They have talented players. Work beyond that talent and good things will happen. And right now, you know, West Virginia with that 2-0 lead still looks like they're working hard and playing with energy. And that's, that, that is a good sign if you're a Mountaineer fan. And Coach Izzo Brown was completely honest when she said, yeah, maybe we got a little overconfident heading into our first NCAA tournament game. And you beat two top 10 teams back-to-back -back weeks and draw the same team again. I mean, it's hard not to think of yourself as uh, pretty quality. Well, absolutely. And Virginia goes on to make it to the national semifinals. So it's, uh, you know, you're, you're playing Virginia back-to-back. -back. You win one, you draw one, play well. You got to feel good about yourself, but it, it that doesn't buy you a ticket. <laughs> it, it, it gets you a ticket into the NCAA tournament, then you have to do it. And that, that's why that's why you play those games. And, and unfortunately, sometimes those lessons are, are very difficult. But uh, it's certainly a lesson learned. 
And West Virginia taking down Duke and then Virginia here at Dick West Soccer Stadium in the spring season of last year. And as we'll see this one again, Kelly saw it late, but never troubling her. West Virginia was perfect at home last year, 6-0. and Holy ground, as Coach Izzo Brown says. Yeah, and it's good to see fans back at, at full capacity. We had uh, limited spectators, I believe, there towards the uh, uh, end of the spring season. Um, there you go, first time back at capacity since 2021. It's a beautiful night here. 657 days, oh my gosh. I what was life like back then, <laughs> you know? Holy cow. But it's good, it's good to see the fans. West Virginia's playing hard for those fans. I know that that's something that's always important. You want to reward the fans for the performance uh, with, with a performance uh, worthy of their attention. And I think West Virginia has played really well so far. Mountaineers will make a switch in the midfield. Aaliyah Scott will come in. Julie Lynch takes the seat. So Aaliyah Scott playing in her 33rd career game for West Virginia. <laughs> Those clever touches from Rodriguez. Here's Scott. Actually started in West Virginia's home opener last year against Kansas State. About 90 seconds until halftime. All things considered, West Virginia certainly, in the most basic sense, has to be satisfied with its first half. Sparacio. Donnie, after it aggressively. Talk about energy, she might be uh, earning that gold medal in that category. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like I said, with, with Valerie and, and, and Rodriguez, it, you can go down the line right now um, with, with who's not playing with energy, who's, who's not, you know, kind of giving it, giving it their all. And uh, I'd be hard pressed to, to name anybody that doesn't look like they are, they are working, you know, trying to outwork their opponent. Under a minute to go here until halftime. West Virginia looking to add another. Angst, Rodriguez. It's a big defender in your way in test forward. Well, everybody's big to Rodriguez. <laughs> you know the feeling, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, real clever so far with, with the ball at her feet. Obviously wants to do a little bit better with that next touch. I don't think much would have been brewing on the end of that anyway, but uh, keep an eye on her uh, with what she's being able to create and uh, for West Virginia. So West Virginia with two back-to-back -back goals in half number one. Julianne Valoran and Lauren Sagala. On the 26th and the 31st, West Virginia will head into the locker room up 2-0 here against Buffalo in the home opener of the 26th season. You're watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. West Virginia is a place as unique as the beauty in its mountains and the strength of its rivers. The peaks and valleys are what make us mountaineers. And as West Virginians, we value hard work, teamwork, and trust. Those values are what make United Bank proud to be united with the mountaineers. Together, we'll climb to new heights. United Bank, West Virginia's bank. If you look at total joint replacement, it is one of the most successful surgeries ever done, as long as it's done right. Think about it like the alignment on your car. If your alignment on your car is off, your tires wear out faster. What robotics does is it takes your preoperative imaging and it makes sure when I put the implants in, they're exactly where I want them to be. If you have a joint problem in West Virginia, there's no reason that you go anywhere else but here. The air feels different on fall Saturdays in West Virginia. Familiar roads lead us on early morning drives to a place where we feel alive. And traditions bring together a fierce fan base united by the same passion, West Virginia football. As West Virginia's bank, we've been there and we'll continue to be there. United Bank, proud to be united with the Mountain East.
Sagala and Valorin, the goal scorers here for West Virginia as they lead Buffalo 2-0 in the home opener. Amanda Mazie caught up with head coach Nikki Izzo-Brown to get her thoughts and what to expect in this coming season. All right, Coach, let's talk about preseason camp going into tonight's game. How was that this season? The girls were so excited to have a normal preseason, um, so it was good. We, we have a lot of returners back. Um, obviously, losing Steffi was a big hit for us, but, um, you know, the girls just have a lot of enthusiasm to be back in, in semi-normal. Let's talk about who you expect to be your top scorers this year. I know you have some returners that you're really excited about. You also have a transfer from Oklahoma in Maya McCutcheon. What are you expecting on that side of the ball? You know, we have our super senior, Lauren Segala. You know, she's going to put some of those balls in the back of the net. We have uh, Delari Beltran. She came in in January, but a freshman. Um, Alina Stahl, you can see some things from. And Sibley, of course. And then you have, uh, we call her m, &M Maya McCutcheon. Um, she's doing some great things for us in midfield. So we feel like we're, we're kind of piecing it together. We're not there yet, but um, we have really good chemistry so far. On the other side of the ball, of course, you have the reigning Big 12 defender for the Big 12 in Jordan Brewster. What are you expecting from her? Big leadership, you know, big leadership from the back. You know, she's going to see the game. She's going to organize it for us, and she's going to lead those shutouts. So, um, you know, we're expecting big things from her because she's so experienced. Let's talk about in goal. Of course, everything ends and starts with uh, Keza Massey. What are you expecting from her this year? Yeah, she, you know, she's coming off a great spring. Um, you know, we, we expect keepers, you know, make that save and then just come up with that one big save, and, and that's what Keza's done. So I know she's worked so hard this summer and we've seen that that improvement in her and that mentality so it's going to be exciting to see what Keza can do. Let's talk about just you know you're playing Buffalo tonight you have number uh, four uh, Virginia up on Sunday I mean right out of the gates let's go let's let's get a good test of yeah. how, how your team's going to do this yeah, year. Yeah Buffalo we can't take them lightly they're going to come out they're going to try to disrupt us they're very organized um, you know they have a couple players that could really punish us um, and yeah, and then you turn around and there's Virginia and, um, you know, there's there's not a weak spot in that team. And we know we're going to have to bring two good games back to back uh, to be successful. Leading up to tonight's game, just talk about the anticipation of starting this season. It, what a crazy year last year was, but just how excited are the girls, the staff, just to sort of get this going. You're the first team for WVU to kick off this fall season tonight. So, you know, let's go. Like, yeah. how was that? It's great. I, I kind of said, too, we were the only team that played uh, the whole year, too, last year. So we had to be sensitive about that recovery and, and coming into the season. But the girls are so excited, and, and they know this is finally kind of the, the normal. And they're just really excited to start this season. We get a conference championship tournament this year. They're excited about that. So um, I would just say enthusiasm and excitement. Every game is a mind game. Distracted, too heavy, too tired. Nah, that's all in your head. Train your mind. Train your game. Because your only limits are the ones you put on yourself. Safe or sporty? We want both. We want a hybrid. So do banks. Today, they're taking a smarter hybrid cloud approach with IBM to personalize experiences with Watson AI while helping keep data secure. Hi. Happy anniversary. For what? Every year you're with us, you get $50 toward your home deductible. It's a policy perk for being a farmer's customer. Really? Do I have to do anything? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Hmm, that really is something. You get a whole lot of something with Farmer's Policy Perks. See ya. May I have a balloon, too? Sure. Your parents have maintained a Farmer's Home Policy for 12 consecutive months, right? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means we see things differently so you can focus on what matters most. Whether it's ensuring food arrives as fresh as when it departs, being first on the scene when every second counts, or teaching biology without a lab, we are the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes 5G in every plan. So you get it all, without trade-offs. Unconventional thinking, it's better for business. 
6G. Growth hack. Network. 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 One evening Let's as go, Walter. the sun went down, the to you. jungle fire was burning. Walter, down the track came Get over. Him on. Frank oh. said, "Boys, I'm not turning. I'm headed for a land that that's is far incredible. away." It's a multi-flex tailgate. It can be a step. It can even become a workspace. I met the cat. What's so great about him? He didn't have a workspace. The Chevy Silverado with the available multi-flex tailgate. Find new adventures. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Coach, does it feel like you just stopped playing? Because your last game was on May 1st because of obviously the COVID year. You had a spring and a fall season. So talk about just the different start and the different feel to this season. Yeah, it, it was. we had to approach it different, the staff, myself. Um, and, you know, we wanted to make sure that the girls felt like there was a break and and now kind of a, a reboot and re-go and recharge. And, you know, we took the team Whitewater Raft and we're like, let's, you know, let's do some fun things. Um, the Olympics were exciting. I think that was also kind of a break. And, you know, we played into the Olympics having two gold medalists. It couldn't have been any better than Whitewater Raft and then for our, our West Virginia family and then two gold medalists and Keisha and Ashley. Let's talk about the Olympics first before we talk about the whitewater rafting. How exciting was that to see your two former players win gold? I know they won bronze a few years ago, but to be at the highest level in the world and bring home that gold, you must be so proud. I'm, I'm like beaming. I, I just, to, to be Olympic champions and to have them here in part of our program and just to have West Virginia enjoy that. I mean, it was, it was awesome. And you know, nobody sees what what the suffering is behind the scenes, and both of them have worked so hard and have grinded it out. And for them to finally get that gold and be the best in the business, man, I'm telling you, ear to ear grinning. You're going to be able to see that gold medal, soon? man. I want to hold that. Yes, we're going to bring them. We're going to make sure they get home and share that share that experience. Let's talk about the whitewater rafting. You did that last week with your team. How important is that team bonding and building, especially as you're getting ready to start this season and you have the grind of the hard work and just to kind of say, hey, let's go have some fun. Yeah, and you know, with COVID, we really couldn't do a lot of social things. So it was really important uh, this season. We did something fun, but also together. It was, it was really hard to kind of bring a team together last year because of COVID. So I think the girls really had a good time and appreciation for it. And you know, almost having West Virginia. It was just absolutely beautiful. We're so fortunate to have that type of situation, you know, right in our back pocket. All right, well, spill the beans. Who has the best white water, white water <laughs> rafting skills? And maybe who were you like, oh, I thought they'd be a little better at this. I was the best, of course, because I'm the most experienced. <laughs> um, I would say a little shaky going in would be Gabby Robinson, but she turned it around and she'd be my wingman uh, going on the next one. How much do you think they appreciate just that time away from soccer? I, I think they really did. And, and life's about experiences. And I want to make sure that, you know, 25 years from now, they can say, hey, remember when we went white water rafting? And that's what it's about. So I'm glad we could find that time and make the time, but also uh, come together as a West Virginia family. And as a coach, when you're in the thick of the season, can you look back on experiences like that and say, yeah, you know, I'm so glad we did that because I can see how it's helped them throughout the season. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we can refer to moments and be like, look at, we got to just picture ourselves back on that river having fun. Cause um, you know, we, sometimes you just got to embrace the tough tough days, um, win the day, but also go back and go, hey, wow, we had a really good time on that river. West Virginia fans, stay up to date on all things Mountaineers at WVUSports.com. WVUSports.com has 24-7 access to all of your favorite Mountaineer teams. The site's modern design provides the same fan-friendly experience on a mobile phone as it does on a desktop computer. Watch videos, listen to podcasts, and read feature stories anytime, anyplace. WVUSports.com, the official home of the West Virginia Mountaineers. We conquer mountains, but that's not why they call us Mountaineers. It's because we don't let anything stand in our way. We build what's never been built, seek cures for the incurable, and go first into undiscovered frontiers. We are Mountaineers, and impossible is just another mountain to climb. Every game is a mind game. Distracted? 
too heavy, too tired. Nah, that's all in your head. Train your mind. Train your game. Because your only limits are the ones you put on yourself. Phillips presents One Blade. Trim, edge, shave. For every style, for your style. Phillips One Blade. Your style made simple. Together, we make life better. Phillips. Ever wonder where home is for athletes when the competition stops? Join us as we take you behind the scenes with six of today's top athletes and explore the place they call home. Don't miss what each had to say on Home Base with USAA on ESPN YouTube. You've Zoomed, you've posted, you've binge watched. Now it's time to get out and play tennis. It lets you keep your social distance without being socially distant. Let's get out and play. The score, West Virginia two, Buffalo nil. As we close in on the second half here from Morgantown, Andrew Caridi, Adam Zundel with you. And for West Virginia, no get nicer or easier goals than the two that they had. They were tap-ins, but they were created wonderfully, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. McCarthy really starts that from the middle of the field, sends it over to Reddy Beltran. Beautiful through the defender's leg. Valorant taps it in, as you mentioned, for the finish. Valorant, very good first half. Obviously, McCarthy as well. And here we look at the second goal. Onks down the line, sending it across. Not quite a tap in, a little bit. Uh, Sagala finishes that off. First 15 minutes, both teams kind of feeling each other out. Then West Virginia really started to exert the pressure on the Bulls. And there you take a look at the stats. West Virginia really in charge all the way down the line. Seven shots, Buffalo just with the one. The Mountaineers also with three of those shots on goal. Two of them uh, went in for that 2 nothing lead and also were able to create some chances off of corner. So right now it's been all West Virginia according to the statistics. That's not on their 70% possession for the Mountaineers, 34 Buffalo. So as we kind of look forward in this second 45, the discussion for Buffalo has to be how to get more of the ball and create some opportunities. There were flashes but unfortunately for the Bulls they were only flashes and very very limited in that first half with an opportunity had had a player spring forward it was Barbaric the player that you want with the opportunity wasn't able to make a, a lot out of it and then Zampano very very high on her the freshman came in immediate impact and then wasn't able to get on the ball really the rest of the way so for Buffalo it's about getting more of the ball 30% is not going to cut it especially when you're trying to get back into this match. So here's a look at the Big 12 preseason poll in West Virginia, as usual, back on top in that one spot. TCU won the league last year, culminating in that uh, unofficial championship game between West Virginia and TCU. But that's what it looks like now. So West Virginia, TCU, as always, Oklahoma State also in the mix. Texas Tech, Texas sitting back in fifth. And then Kansas, Baylor, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and Kansas State round out the top 10. So expectations for West Virginia, certainly lofty. Their defensive performance uh, was solid. Championships are the goal, and uh, with defense like that, you can win a lot of championships. But here's what the MAC looks like. Buffalo expected to win the MAC this year, at least voted on by the coaches. They didn't get that opportunity to uh, play for the MAC title last year against Bowling Green due to COVID, but Bowling Green gonna be right at their heels this time again. Ball State, Western Michigan. It's a 12-team conference. And that's what it shakes out to be. They've got so many returning players and starters on this Buffalo team. Hard not to pick them as one of the best in that conference. Yeah, when we talked to Coach Burke, all he wanted was the chance. He wanted that chance in that game. He said, maybe we would have lost it and, we, and, you know, we wouldn't have made it anyway. But he wanted the chance to play. And I think that's a really difficult situation, obviously. Fairness and, and equity was kind of out the window with COVID. You, you do the best you can to try and balance the schedule. Um, as, you, as you take a look at the upcoming matches for West Virginia, we got a big one coming up on Sunday as the Cavaliers come into town. Again, we mentioned Virginia made it all the way to the College Cup semifinals last year. 
as the two teams played back-to-back <laughs> -back matches in the spring and uh, will play once again here in just a couple of days. Third time since April 3rd that uh, we got another top 10 matchup between those two teams and uh, also Kids Club's Day. Kids Club Day coming up on that Sunday as well. So that'll be a 2 p.m. kick against number four, Virginia. So bring them out. A lot of fun promos that you weren't able to have last year uh, due to the restrictions, but uh, all the fun, all the games, and Dollar Day, Pup at the Park, all the stuff you want to have is back. And you're going to see a really good matchup. You're going to talk about two of the best teams in the country going toe-to-toe -to -toe, um, on Sunday. You want that home field advantage if you're West Virginia. Get that, that crowd environment that was that was missing from, from everything last year. Uh, so it should be a, a fun time to come out, and you'll see a really good performance, I, I expect. So Buffalo huddling up. One final discussion for their 11 before they resume action for West Virginia. It will be the same starting 11 that began the game up top. Sibley, Valorin, Redia Beltran, McCutcheon, Lynch, McCarthy. We've got Payne, Brewster, Leslie, and Mackenzie Angst. But coach Sean Burke told us that, you know, despite what happens in this game, we're going to learn about ourselves. We're, we're going to learn where our soft spots are and learn what to correct. It really doesn't cost us anything besides some hard truths. Yeah, absolutely. He said, you, know, you come to you come to play West Virginia, and you're going to be exposed. You want to <laughs> you want to limit those, and, and hopefully you don't get punished the way uh, that West Virginia has punished. But uh, a team of uh, the quality of West Virginia is going to punish you for the for those kinds of mistakes. And um, you know, right now West Virginia is playing really well in that first 45. The expectation of Coach Ezo Brown was to maintain is going to be to maintain that level. Uh, I thought it was a really hard-working first half for West Virginia, and so that is getting, again going to be the standard here in the second half. That being said, you find your soft spots and you find your weaknesses against teams that you play, whereas in the Virginia game for West Virginia, they kind of know each other extremely well. So what can you glean from a third matchup in just a handful of months? And well, since it doesn't mean as much, Adam, sorry to interrupt, but do you try anything? You experiment. Even though it, it is this, it going to be, the lineups are going to be very similar. It's it's still going to be a different season, even though it is just months away. And there might be slight changes in personnel. There might be slight changes in rotation, um, not just your your first eleven. So, uh, yeah, and I think you play just like Buffalo is playing West Virginia to potentially be exposed. West Virginia is going to play Virginia for that same for that same reason, and try to see where to get better. Payne was trying to find that incisive ball to Valorin, who's playing off the shoulder of Hannah Callahan. It's going to go for a West Virginia corner off the last touch from Buffalo. So West Virginia with its fourth corner of the game. This time Brewster to take. Lynch took all of them in the first half. Rydia Beltran creating the screen in front of Kelly. Lifted over the top of everybody. McCutcheon will chase it down. And the set, Honks try to play McCutcheon to change the angle on the cross is away from her. I really can only think of a couple of possessions West Virginia had that, I don't want to say waste, that's a little bit harsh, but I felt like West Virginia really maximized its possession in that first 45 minutes. It's not something that, uh, uh, if you're a Buffalo fan, that, that the Bulls can say, uh, maximizing that possession. And so that's West Virginia, what West Virginia is going to try and do here in this, this 45. It might not end up in a goal, but is it a productive possession? Did you move the ball? Did you, uh, you know, make some switches? Valorant looking to play that cross from Sibley. Skying it instead for Kelly. See that again. Honestly, it was great positioning. She's just she's just everywhere right now, uh, trying to make something happen. She is uh, putting herself in the, in the mix. We talked about West Virginia's goals being relatively wide open to finish. And Emily Kelly, the senior goalkeeper for Buffalo, has started every game since she was a freshman, playing in her 48th. 
contest today. 85% save percentage last year, along with four shutouts. Just the eight games that Buffalo played. And he hasn't been able to show her talents in this game, but sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, when I, when I think about the goals that West Virginia scored, and I, and I, and I alluded to it in the first half, it, I felt like it was West Virginia execution. Uh, West Virginia is making better plays than Buffalo in those moments and winning those moments rather than, you know, total lapses or total breakdowns. Is, I think it's just West Virginia executing just percentages better, and, and it turns out into a, a, a pair of goals. This is Abby Callahan. Twin of Hannah. Back and forth. Lynch, Heredia Beltran. And it's fought off by Emily Kelly at the near post. Taken with the left by Heredia Beltran after another nice chop to the outside and another West Virginia corner. We know who's dangerous, Adam. Yeah, another great touch to get space and create space. Fires that shot off with some pace and a really big time save there for Kelly to not make it three nothing. But we've seen a couple of those, those touches that have just been bursts of speed for Heredia Beltran creating that necessary space to either get a shot or, or lay one off as we saw on the, on the goal. Handball West Virginia. Buffalo possession. We're just kind of ping-ponging around a little bit. It seems like Kelly actually got the hand on it. Off that shoulder. Be debatable. Probably could have played on on, on that one. Didn't, didn't handle it. It grazed her shoulder. It looked like she tried to make herself any any bigger or run into it, just kind of hit her shoulder, but nonetheless. You remember when Mario Balotelli scored that goal for Manchester City when it fell, he actually scored it with his shoulder. <laughs> Speaking of the former Italian international player, Barbaric now gonna break loose of Leslie. Has the support on the turn. Wengender lays it off. Your check off the crossbar. And nearly a shout to get back into the game for Buffalo. It was on a platter, and Yurchek could not apply the finishing touch. You can't really do it much better if you're Buffalo except that last touch. I mean, a, an uncharacteristic giveaway by West Virginia in the middle of the field. That got, thing go got things going for Buffalo. Could play in the middle there to lay it off. The, the chances there, and, and, and Massey's presence. You know, maybe affects that shot, but off the crossbar. Again, your chances have been few and far between. It could ultimately change the complexion of this match if you're able to convert that. But for, for Buffalo, it's another another really good opportunity that, that goes by the wayside. McCutcheon leads the charge. Central from Heredia Beltran. McCutcheon again. McCutcheon in the area. Gonna lift it over the keeper and score! Welcome to the club, Maya McCutcheon. In her first game, she gets her first goal in gold and blue. And it's 3-0 West Virginia. Great patience over the top of the keeper. Well, how about a deft touch again from Valorant to really kind of uh, control that ball, get it to McCutcheon. Great finish. Oh, Perfectly man. placed. Oh, man, it does not get better than that. And we heard Coach Izzo Brown talking with Amanda Maisie in the halftime segment. You know, she threw McCutcheon in that offensive goal scoring category, which maybe raised an eyebrow or two, but now we know. Maya McCutcheon in the 53rd minute makes it 3 0 Mountaineers. The Oklahoma transfer. Part of the all Big 12 freshman team in 2019. Had three goals that year. 
gets her first in her first game. Payne. Kelly punches it away. And that comes off of the opportunity. That's just what, for I, was, that's just what I was going to say. It's got to be so deflating to have that opportunity hit the grass bar and then pretty much the next possession for West Virginia, it, it turns into a goal and it just, you know, you, you get to three nothing in, in a bunch of different ways, right? And, and you can feel differently about that score line, but those plays consecutively, as, as a header goes over the crossbar, those plays consecutively really have to kind of just weigh you down. Sibley getting on the end of that one is Already a Beltran continues to thrive. Just a little underneath it. Well, as you, as you saw that, that replay in that shot, not a Buffalo player and not a blue jersey in sight. And you just can't give that time and space to, to really any West Virginia player because they're going to be able to pick you apart on that next player, that next pass. So Buffalo really, and particularly in that area of the field, needs to close down that space. And offside is one gender. Tried the little give and go there, but uh, the go was offside. We almost were able to have the discussion of, okay, so Buffalo does find some positivities. We get a second look. Buffalo trying to build it up a little bit, but offside was one gender. To build off that opportunity, at least just something to build off of, right? And Coach Burke's stress was, okay, we probably are not gonna win this game. You know, we, he said specifically, we have to play perfect to win this game, but he wants to see how they continue to compete despite what the score line might read. And that was just something to at least engage themselves. And you just see West Virginia's quality. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the perfect performance thing was it, it kind of caught me a, as well. He said it's going to have to be a perfect performance. And, and if I'm looking at this, obviously the possessions one is, is is in favor of West Virginia. The scoreline is heavily in favor of West Virginia. They've made they've made some mistakes, and those mistakes have, have ended up as goals for West Virginia. You know, they haven't been absolute blunders. Uh, and, you know, he kind of referred to that at, at, at some point. I don't feel like they've been absolute blunders. Um, but West Virginia's just been a, a little bit better, um, so it hasn't been a, it hasn't been the perfect performance that he'd hoped for. And on top of that, I feel like West Virginia's played really, really well and executed to lead to this three nothing scoreline. There's Coach Burke in his eighth season. In the meantime, he's making some substitutions. It's Rukin back into the game for Lazenby for Buffalo. Sibley played by Payne, who's in a more advanced position in the second half. Sibley, this one, and nicely Valorin. It's on the end of it, off a couple of bodies, but Kelly will have it bounce to him. Once again, Valorin's in the mix, right in the middle of the field. Just a little bit faster to get to that in front of the defender. Not able to get enough on it. But that work rate, you know what you're gonna get with Julianne Valorant. Zampano gave it away. This is Payne through a couple. Ford looking for the exit pass. Carthy snuffs that out. I was going to say, Nicole Payne really didn't have a chance to get forward in that first half, but here she is playing almost at a wing position. Brewster driven into the feet of McCarthy. Callahan gave it away. Brewster steps up. Zampano having a go with Brewster there. The whistle blows. West Virginia has basically everybody still forward. So you'll see some overlapping and some combinations from, as you mentioned, the backs getting, getting involved. Uh, West Virginia still attacking and sending numbers forward. So Lynch, measuring it up. A little more 
lift on that one required. Played 13 minutes in half number two. West Virginia getting that third goal from the chip, if you want to call it, Maya McCutcheon in the 53rd. Certainly well placed. Deflection off of Robertson, so it's West Virginia ball. West Virginia's opportunity to make some switches. Leah Scott and Lauren Sagala will enter. Sibley and McCutcheon making way. West Virginia made six subs in that first half. Again, that's not that's not unusual. Uh, as coaches around likes to have a have a rotation. Your check across time and out of the reach of Zampano. West Virginia, or I'm sorry, Buffalo needs to sustain possession here and get something out of this. Wengender looking to challenge Lynch, who steps across. And we've got the flag raised on the other side. Which will allow Buffalo to make its substitutions. Caitlin Walsh preparing to enter, along with Olivia Bizzoni. See Massey without a save here. Hasn't been called upon to make a save in this one so far. We mentioned the field has been tilted in terms of possession in West Virginia's favor. So it's going to lead to some limited opportunities for the Bulls, and that, that in turn leads to limited opportunities for a save, which I'm sure if you're a West Virginia fan, is, is okay by you. Not that, you, not that you don't trust her, yeah. but it's much, much better if that if you don't have to. Well, the shot stopping is never the issue for Kaysa Massey, is it? With Virginia coming up on Sunday, she'll have her moments, that's for sure. See if she had Charlottesville was something you don't see very often. Exactly, that's that's something that is unique to her her skill set. Several changes here for Buffalo coming in. West Virginia substitution number 23. Buffalo had made five subs in the first half. So similar, similar substitution pattern for both teams in the in the first 45, but it uh, looks like Buffalo added a few more numbers on that last sub. Abby Rodriguez back into the game. In the meantime, we the first corner here for Buffalo. Trying to manufacture here something here on set opportunity. Bizzani to take. Floating near post. Massey and Brewster to combine and punch it out of there. It was four getting the last piece of it. And the deflection on that shot allows Massey to field it cleanly. And snuff out that opportunity. McCarthy from Rodriguez. Into Rodriguez and Kelly off the line. Rodriguez goes soaring over the top. Just by about a half a beat there, Kelly was able to get there. Zampano well, surrounded, but it touches off a West Virginia player last. Kaya Schultz. Andrea Judas. I've also come into the game for Buffalo. With Callahan and Camper making way. Redia Beltran will sit. 
Chloe Adler will re-enter. Really not a good giveaway there from, from Buffalo as you're trying to trying to mount something, just a total miss hit out of bounds and give the ball back to West Virginia in this spot. Rodriguez gets the call, corner for West Virginia. West Virginia with two goals in the first half. Added another here in the second for Maya McCutcheon. So the goal scorers, Valorin, Sagala, and McCutcheon. More changes for Mountaineer. Sibley re-enters along with Ladani. Corner in from Brewster. Communication there between Payne and Onks, but Cole Payne having the green light to move forward. Here in this half, she does, and it'll be reset. Buffalo prides itself on pressing and never really found the footing to do so, haven't they? No, there's really haven't been much opportunity. Uh, they, they conceded space early, and then it's just not been the right time to, to try and press the issue. Hard to press West Virginia when any top level team that you play against, including West Virginia, can make a twist to the hips and a flick of the foot and completely change the feel or change the avenue of attack. Well, when we talk about, you know, quite honestly, the lack of opportunities for Buffalo means the ball hasn't been in that end. So when are you going to press if the ball's not down there? The ball's been down on the other end of the field um, and you're doing the best you can to defend and, and, stay, um, and stay in space. Um, but these are the opportunities now if West Virginia gets that you press or try to press. And there just haven't been a ton of these. Um, and, and again, Buffalo's kind of said they're going to pick their spots and that's what they've done. They've got a little bit of a higher, higher line now, but still not pressing the issue necessarily. Maybe trying to wait for that, that second or third pass before they, they move forward as you see. There's a player charging a little bit. Again, just working now we're here in the Buffalo coaching staff, say get a little bit higher. Too many touches there for Buffalo. I think she's got to get that off her foot, get that to the other side of the field. West Virginia's able, got too much speed and is able to close down that space play a little bit quicker, and that's something that West Virginia is going to make you do. Play a little bit quicker than you want to. Sibley with time there just gave it away. Barbaric to re-enter along with Leah Wengender for Buffalo, Zampano and Yurchak. Alexa. Buffalo substitutions, number 11, Marty Barbaric for number 9, Gianna Yurchak. Barbaric was threatening eight, in the first couple of minutes of the game. Ariana and I uh, was salivating at the matchup against the freshman for West Virginia, Annika Leslie. A couple opportunities, but hasn't played much of the second half, but now, I mean, she's got fresh legs, so keep an eye out for 11 and blue. Just for something. Nine goals last year in eight games. Ladani into the path of Adler. Back square. Bouncing around off of Ladani, and it should be a goal kick for Buffalo. How about those combinations through the middle of the field to spring it out wide and create something to get another look at this final touch there. A really good quick touch, a quick play there for West Virginia. Putting the Mountaineers in another dangerous spot, not able to get a shot on that opportunity. Okay. 
Adler down the line. Whistle blows late. Could have been a. Yeah, everybody was waiting. For, everybody was waiting for the whistle. It finally came. A little heavy of a touch there, but see West Virginia having some success getting through the middle and then, then spraying out wide in, in these last few moments. It's Chloe Adler down the line for West Virginia. Sophomore. Adani, Rodriguez combining. It's a good step from Kaya. Schultz for Buffalo. But immediately West Virginia, as always, winning that ball back. Sagala, cleared away. Ladani wanted to have it, tapped in. Was she onside? No, flag was up. That was Adler applying the finishing touch. It manifested out of nothing, but just a little bit more situational awareness. And you know what? What do you think? That was. Let's watch this ball as, as, as it comes in. Oh, she. Oh, that is, that's close. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to always defer yep, to the person yep, with, yep. with the, the sight actually down the line, but that definitely was close. Of, course, of, of course, every defender puts their hand up like, well, of course she's offside, right? So you can't really take their word. Right. Well, well, yeah, right. she's offside. But it was it was certainly close on that last, on that last bit. Second opportunity coming from Sigala that time. West Virginia really able to pick its passes out. Crosses in. So this is a three goal West Virginia performance without your co leader in goals from last season, Alina Stahl, in the mix. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty encouraging sign, and I think West Virginia's been really dynamic on the attack. I mean, it's been a bunch of different players, and, and not just, again, not just the first 11. Here we are with some substitutes in the game that are really dangerous and dynamic and uh, creating a lot of opportunities, and that's got to be very, very encouraging. Hong's first step is, I think, shocks the defenders that step to her. She might be the fastest in the Big 12. Second place, maybe Nicole Payne. <laughs> you know, when we asked about, you know, some players that have made strides over year, over year, over year, that's who coaches are Brown pinpointed as somebody, you know, when we look back about Stephanie Ferrer Van Ginkle, her performance as, a, as in her final year was a little bit, it was, was much better. We have a, also have a change in goalkeeper here, just to make note of. Um, her growth, right? She, she really grew as a player during her time here in West Virginia, and you're seeing that also from Mackenzie Ongst. All right, so let's see what Maddie Murphy show of her distribution skills, because that's all that's been <laughs> called for of Kayla Ma Kayza Massey in this game. It's West Virginia. With another corner. This will be driven hard. Rodriguez going for the scissor volley. Scott, Brewster is on side. And the gloves of Kelly. So Ma Maddie Murphy, the junior goalkeeper. You know, and it's been a battle. It's been a battle between uh, Massey and Murphy since the start of fall camp last year. Um, and, and Murphy did get the, the nod before Massey started to win the job. And uh, even, you know, even up until this week, Coach said it, they're, they're neck and neck. And I think, you know, they're a little bit different styles, a uh, little different, different skill sets. And I think game time and reps are, are important to, to see both in game action again, right? So you can only simulate so much. You can only see so much in practice and, and even in exhibition games, it, it's, it's when the lights are on. And, and that cross means something in a, in a regulation game. What are your, what's your decision making going to be like? Murphy now a senior, by the way. 
it's really difficult to keep track of, yeah. <laughs> of years. Every yep. you know the COVID year eligibility wise um, did not count towards anybody last year. So everybody basically got a, a, a free a free year of eligibility. So how that's being how that's being quite honestly the terminology for those players it varies almost by by institution. Uh, how they how they treat those players. Did they advance? Are they are they still a junior? Are they a senior? How many years of eligibility? So if they're a senior, how many years of eligibility do they have? It's 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 COVID, right? It's COVID time. So um, just kind of keep that in mind that it, last year at least everyone got a, got that el year of eligibility back. Whether the players exercise it and use it, that's to be determined. But um, eligibility wise, was was a free was a free pass. So it was Adam who was technically saying, as I was right. Always. In a roundabout fashion. Always right, my friend. Barbaric wants to let it fly, and Brewster gets the leg in front. Corner kick coming up here for Buffalo. That's where she's dangerous. Just peeling off that shoulder, but it's a Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, that's good on good, right? Mac Offensive Player of the Year, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And uh, Barbaric just hasn't been able to get involved enough here tonight for Buffalo. Got to get her touches. Got to get her involved. Got to get her distributing as well. And it's just been it's just been an up it's just been uphill here for Buffalo. Freshman Rukin takes. Sagala heads it out. Tapped off of Sibley. And Rodriguez changes the angle on it. One Gender, nice touch around Sibley. There's Brewster once again. And another corner kick here for Buffalo. So when we talk about in the open about Jordan Brewster being just super competitive, I mean, and that you can see it, that's that kind of play is is precisely what I'm talking about. Never get up, fight in there, stick your nose in there, be disruptive. Be difficult to deal with. It's 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 technical ability, it's attitude, it's determination, and just at the at the end of the day, it's like I don't want to lose, and I'm not gonna let my team lose. I'm not gonna lose this moment. Murphy punches out. Rodriguez looks to clear. Pass Murphy for the West Virginia goal kick. Maddie Murphy spending 2018-19 with Boston College. Played a handful of games with them and actually started the first four games of last season when she transferred to West Virginia. Had a shutout against Iowa State. Scored on four times from Grafton, Massachusetts. Now a senior, Kaza Massey, the junior. West Virginia changes as McCutcheon comes back into the game for Sibley and Sparacio re-enters for Sagala. And to continue the conversation about Jordan Brewster is it's rare that you actually have to see her win so many one-on-ones in her defensive area because usually she's playing with Gabby Robinson and that combination is extremely strong but obviously Annika Leslie who's getting the start at center back for West Virginia in this game doesn't quite have the polish or experience that Robinson does. So you're able to see Brewster on display uh, in the more blatant uh, examples. Yeah, I think there's a level of responsibility out there when you're when you're playing with a teammate that's kind of gotten thrust in that that situation. I'm gonna leave her out to out to dry. You're gonna shade maybe towards her a little bit and try to protect. And uh, again, it's controlling the moment. You know that ball's over there. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna win it. Don't worry, I got it. You know. <laughs> Goal kick for Buffalo. Fox was appealing. Fox making her case down the touchline. Abby Rodriguez. It's a more stern look than usual from our official Jorge Ramirez. Let's see it again. And yeah. But as we've seen so many times in this game, West Virginia gets the ball back. Let's touch 
touchdown from Ladani. Has Rodriguez forward. Can't make that pass. Barbara was just trying to hold to stay on side. The, the idea was there. Buffalo was sniffing a counter there and just couldn't quite get that touch in time to spring forward. There it's timed, but offside. Just barely, fooled me. You can do so much with so little with positioning. Yeah, and Brewster was watching it right in front of her, so she was able to to get herself. Uh, she she knew that that was going to be an offside spot, so it's a savvy play. Sparacio after this one, off the free kick from Brewster. This will stay in the line. Sparacio unable to handle though. Great speed from Sparacio, the freshman and strength and size. Doesn't really mention, but seems like that's another West Virginia forward with an extremely high ceiling, Adam, something that Coach Izzo Brown brought up herself, actually, in our conversation. Here's Barbaric, chased down by McCutcheon. Brewster has the angle. She'll drop it back and lift it over the bar. By the Buffalo forward, Catherine Camper. Not much she could do with that. No, and again, it's, it's that sense of urgency. Uh, if you're Buffalo, you feel like that's going to be your only chance, and that's going to be your best chance, rather than trying to have some composure, maybe to play for something else, maybe something inside the box, kind of settling for it, because you feel like that's going to, going to be as good as it gets. And, that, and again, that's kind of the challenge uh, playing against West Virginia. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe in, in some, uh, some competition later this season, there's going to be an extra touch. There's going to be, you know, uh, an extra pass, uh, maybe an extra touch, to, you know, forward to herself to try to try and get a shot on, try to get around the defender. So, um, you know, still, still a long season ahead for Buffalo and trying to trying to get a lesson and trying to build off this was was kind of the point. And I think they're going to, um, you know, obviously still have 10 minutes to play here, but that's going to be, uh, it looks like what happens here tonight. You always want to learn a lesson in a win, but sometimes, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it doesn't go that way. Harbor comes off for Buffalo. In the meantime, so does Peyton Robertson. Zampano. Hannah Callahan will re-enter. And some more West Virginia Mountaineers making their debut. The freshmen are coming on. Got Rhea Kajoski in that center forward position, as well as Brooke Brown, who slotted into that left back role. Kajoski, the freshman from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. As Murphy launches this one. Brooke Brown from Liberty Township, Ohio. That was a good ball out of the back there from Murphy, just not able to be completely controlled after it was brought down, possessed for, for a bit, but good out of the back, especially under a little bit of pressure. Only four players right now on the field for West Virginia who started originally. It's McCutcheon, Brewster, Leslie, and Payne. You know, one of the things that was we saw last year when you're playing once a week, you're not necessarily concerned with your load on minutes uh, because you have a full week to recover. Now we're back to the normal college soccer grind where it's multiple games in a week. And if you can spare a few minutes for, for some players, then, uh, th then you're going to go ahead and try and take advantage of that. I don't think that's ever going to be the plan because, you know, we're, you know we hope, you, maybe you hope it, but you don't ever explicitly go into that because this, you know, I really felt like this could go either way West here um, today. West Virginia's played three, really, really well. Um, seven, but you, again, you kind of hope that if you have a lead, you're feeling good about, you're feeling good about it, 
that maybe we can rest some players, save, save a few minutes, especially with Virginia coming into town. Almost official here in Morgantown as we have crossed into the 83rd minute. Look at a step here from Brown. Didn't do much with it though. And uh, that then puts the onus on your starters, Adam, to do their job, kind of earn some time of recovery, which you, you now need again. Yep. You talk to basically any coach, and they do not like packing in those games in a weekend, which who would? You know, it, it was interesting, though, going through what we talked with, with the coaches last fall and spring, that there were a lot of coaches that like the immediate feedback of, of, of competition. Obviously, coaches like that, but almost, yeah, we'll, we'll play twice a week because we want to know where we are. We want to know if we've improved one game to the next. And then you had some coaches that really love that week off where you can recover and then train properly, prepare properly, and then play. But I, I, again, I think it was surprising to me because I felt like that was going to be kind of the overwhelming consensus. Yeah, we like that one one game a week. But there were a lot that were like, no, we want to play. Yeah. Let's let's play. Yeah. Let's roll it out there. Yeah, understandable. Let's come down to preference. Coach Ezra Brown, though, trying to take all the time to develop that you possibly can. So, Virginia will open its season tonight against Richmond. Starting here in a few minutes. Seven o'clock kickoff for that one. So basically, as soon as this one concludes, the fans at home can start their scout of Virginia. That's right. You know, tweet us, tweet us your game plan. Foul there, Ladani trying to start that counter. Callahan caught her ankle. You know, Ladani's been a player to me that's kind of stood out in that second wave as well. I thought she's come out and, and had a lot of good touches. It's it's so, <laughs> you look at a box score at the end of the game and you maybe see, you know, we've got three different goal scorers right now in this match. Um, assists from a couple of different players, but so many players that maybe didn't get that score sheet are gonna walk away tonight and go, oh yeah, so-and-so, uh, you know, 16 played really well. 15 played really well. Just, just you know, pick a number that, that might not show up on that box score. Under five to play here at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium. Two first half goals by West Virginia, six minutes apart. In the 25th officially, Valoran from Heredia Beltran and McCutcheon. That's what the stat sheet says. And then in the 31st minute, Sagala from Mackenzie Angst. And then Maya McCutcheon in the 53rd minute here in the second half. Maria Kiyoski, the freshman. On the screen there as Buffalo will make a substitution again. Comes in and Kiyoski gets the debut goal. It's four for West Virginia, and it's the new faces making their mark. Right on cue, Rhea Kiyoski, and we'll see it again. The work from Sparacio. Speed down the line, and again, how about the outside of the foot finish? Absolutely. And that's a hardworking play. Sparacio just outworking Buffalo. Three minutes left in this. West Virginia's up 3 nothing at that time. And the ball's loose. It's a 50-50 it's a ball to a certain degree, probably more 60-40 in, in, in favor of Buffalo. Sparacio comes in, wins it down the line. And you, you said it, beautiful finishing touch there for the finish. The bench went wild here for West Virginia, getting that last touch. 
Two years in a row, West Virginia puts four on the board in the home opener. Did it against Kansas State last year. And now Buffalo this year. Valoran, Sagala, McCutcheon, and Rhea Kiyoski. Worth noting, four different goal scores is that shot just doesn't have enough on it. You can almost probably consider that a half, half opportunity, but uh, you know, that's kind of the, one of the themes tonight is the depth. Let's take another look at it. Or if you're getting the timing right. Mm -hmm. So how about Kioski playing for her dad, Joe, at Waynesburg Central? Scored more than 100 career goals and 60 assists. Finalist for the Western Pennsylvania Player of the Year. She scored a couple goals, and what she did was not easy. And is she in again? No, she's offside, and she missed. Some players ha have a nose for goal, and you can see that she is one of those kinds of players. That's, that looks like that was going to be close. D don't have a full picture yep. of the full back line there, but that one looks like it's going to be close. Oh, she was miles on. She was held on by Callahan, 13 and blue there. It looked like there was also another Buffalo player at the edge of the box before that ball was forward, but. about this from Adler, trying to get in on the fun. Chloe Adler, it's under a minute to go, 40 seconds. With the statement made here for this West Virginia team. New blood, new beginnings and high expectation followed up on both sides of the ball here. 20 seconds away from a shutout. A four spot against the team picked to win the MAC. Ten, you nine, begin the eight, season seven, on the right six, foot before you host five, Virginia. Four, three, Top five team two, here one, on Sunday. Zero. Clock hits zero. West Virginia four, Buffalo four, nil. Virginia four, and another Buffalo victory at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium for West Virginia University. And the fall athletic season for WVU kicks off with a bang at him. A really complete performance here from West Virginia. Really solid start to finish. Played hard all the way through. Lots of depth on display. Finishing ability. Really solid performance. If you're Buffalo, you're a little bit disappointed. But this will serve the Bulls well going forward. A really talented team, experienced team. And I expect a lot of victories from Buffalo here this season. That's going to be it for us. 4 nothing. the final goals from Valorin, Sagala, McCutcheon, and Kioski. Mountaineers victorious here at home. Join us again Sunday when the Mountaineers take on Virginia here in Morgantown. That's going to do it for us as we'll give you highlights until the break. For Adam Zundel, I'm Andrew Perea saying so long, and we'll see you Sunday from Dick Soccer Stadium in Morgantown on Big 12 Now on ESPN+.